this investment. Do the math and join the over 15,000 new customers who have recently made the switch to SD Bullion. Why pay more? Hey everyone, this is Elijah Johnson with FinanceInLiberty.com and back with us today is Dr. Jim Willey, editor of The Hattrick Letter, found on GoldenJackass.com. Jim, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, it's a pleasure to be back, Eli. All right. Well, I'd first like to discuss about the Fed's rate hike. Now, what's really interesting is you think that the Fed actually hasn't raised interest rates. You think this was just all a fake, and instead, the Fed is implementing more quantitative easing. Did you want to discuss a little bit about this? Yes, I think that's a real good capsule summary. To begin with, the Fed is one of the greatest lying institutions in all of modern history, and they are the tool for tremendous largesse bestowed upon their own members. Now, they are grand liars, but they are also enablers of great theft. And the greatest theft they've ever had was following the Lehman incident, the Lehman event, the Lehman death in 2008. They had two different waves where they gave near 0% loans to the owners of the Fed, $23 trillion. Okay? I would like to get a 0% loan for $1 trillion. I'll settle for maybe a billion. You know what I'm trying to say. All right, so these are members of a banker crime syndicate. They don't tell the truth. They never do. Greenspan used to rely on his obfuscation, which, went, which really meant confuse the heck out of you so that you are impressed enough to say whatever you want to do. When they recently, in 2013, had their taper talk, they threatened to raise the interest rates, and I called it a trial balloon. Now they've done more. They've actually uh, made an open statement that they were raising the interest rate for the Fed funds by 25 basis points. And there are other little details related to that. But I'm calling them liars because if you look at the effective Fed fund rate, three days after the supposed rate hike, it was not 25 basis points higher. It was about eight which meant that they really had not enacted their rate hike after three full days. So what on earth were they doing? If you take a look at now, you see that somewhere between 16, 18, and 20 basis points is the hike on the effective – not the hike – is the increase on the effective Fed, run, Fed funds interest rate. But more importantly, what you see now is that the three-month Treasury bill has an inverted yield versus the Fed funds rate. This cannot stand. They, they've actually caused a disruption on the very short end of the Treasury market. When they announced the rate hike, they slipped in something – that usually is mentioned in the second and third paragraph and not very well focused upon by the, the, the shallow uh, minds out there. The, you know, <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I just don't have a whole lot of respect for the financial community, the analysts, the observers, the traders. They just look at the headline and go, okay, here's how we, here's how we act on it. Here's how we make money on it. Here's how we exploit it. Here's a trading strategy. What they did was they cited a heavier reliance on the reverse repo. And I'm, I'm willing to admit I got something backwards. Before I thought we had a confirmation of gigantic volume of $40 billion a day of failures to deliver on treasury bond sales. 
I identified that as Wall Street doing naked shorting of $40 billion a day. By that, I mean selling treasury bonds that they do not own. I mean, I like to sell a whole stack of IBM stock that I don't own and never be held responsible for it. We can't do things like that. But what they've, what they've done is they've soaked up cash and made sure that the big banks are loaded with treasuries, which they can leverage upon. Okay, so if, if you look for a summary statement on what they've done with these reverse repos, it's they've assured that the big banks are leveraged more than they ever have been before. And I used a, a year ago a, an analogy of a Tower of Babel. And this tower is higher now, and this tower is more narrow now. And, and that's a very bad combination for instability. Okay, but take a closer look. What does reliance on the reverse repo mean? It means that something else has stepped in to carry the load. They're soaking up a lot of treasuries that are being dumped on the market. For example, China, after getting turned down at the IMF for inclusion in the SDR basket, that special drawing rights, which is the dollar, the pound, the euro, and the yen from Japan, China exacted its own revenge. And what they did was they sold $250 billion worth of treasury bonds in August, September, and October. That's a quarter of a trillion dollars. Take a close look at the treasury bond yield for the 10-year, and you see no change. Since when does a market endure a quarter of a trillion dollars in dumping and not change? The answer is when they have the Exchange Stabilization Fund, uh, the ESF. The ESF, Exchange Stabilization Fund, is a major component at the Department of Treasury. It's shrouded in secrecy. It's involved in dozens of financial markets and rigging, all illegal. And they do their activity under the cover of national security. So, China forced out into the open the Exchange Stabilization Fund. I'm going to call it ESF from here on. They forced out in the open the ESF activity at the Treasury Department. So when the Fed announced that they were going to rely on reverse repo more and, and amplify its volume and reliance, what they're really saying is we're going to a double-barrel QE. And this time the volume will all be kept hidden because the ESF operates under total secrecy with national security implications. The Fed's rate hike was essentially, Eli, an admission that they're going to double-barreled QE, infinite volume, and doing it in total secrecy with an implication of national security. Their admission now of, of the rate hike and, and reverse repo essentially says the dollar is now at national security risk. This is very, very big. The ESF is, I think, a criminal contraption. It's involved primarily at, at its origin. It was involved primarily as a, a, a currency stabilization fund to make sure that following the, the Bretton Woods and that, that everything was, you know, hunky-dory in the currency world when we got rid of the gold standard. So take, take out the gold standard and its stability. You need to put in something else to assure the stability, and that's what the ESF did. Now we're seeing it linked with QE in a formal sense but in a way that most people gloss over and don't pay a rat's bit of attention to. This, I believe, will cause the dollar to rise because you have the impression around the world, well, the, 
the, the, the Fed is tightening. The Fed's are going to offer more on their interest rates. The Fed is offering a higher yield for the ex- excess reserves that, it's, that, it's, that it takes from the big banks. Uh, this is a rate hike. Most rate hikes cause a currency to rise. Naturally, it attracts more capital. But in this case, we might get kind of a, a false rise from the, uh, not a spiritual, ethereal effect, the psychological effect. But this is while most central banks are dumping their treasury bonds. It's an activity to cover the treasury bond dumping and to do so under the guise of national security. So we've gotten to national security issues now regarding dumping of the dollar in the form of treasury bond. This is very big, very important. I outlined it in the uh, December hat trick letter uh, in, in more detail, like a few pages and what it all means. It, it had to be digested for me in a matter of, of a couple of days because I think uh, – the, the announcement on a given Wednesday in, in early December was very close to the deadline for posting a report. So I, I put my, my head together with colleagues, and we, we figured out what this was. And I give a lot of credit to Rob Kirby and good credit to uh, Euro Raj. Uh, Rob Kirby is all over the Exchange Stabilization Fund and, and its activity. He calls it the most gigantic market-rigging uh, contraption ever devised by mankind. Mentioning that the dollar is at national security risk, you've talked about before about this idea of an economic reset, and the fall of the dollar really is a very important part of this economic reset that you talk about. I was thinking for the rest of the interview, we could discuss more specifics about the economic reset. So before we get into more specifics about the economic reset, for our new viewers, did you want to give us an overview of what the economic reset is, some of its recent history, and some of the deception and delays surrounding it? It was probably around late 2013 that uh, the world power superpowers, and I'm talking about you know England, U.S., Germany, France, uh, China, and Russia – they, they, they all had a big powwow and said the dollar cannot continue to be the global reserve currency. You can't have QE, which is quantitative easing, which is bond purchase program off printed money. You can't have unsterilized hypermonetary inflation for the global reserve currency. And, and the, the stupidity and recklessness of that combined with the lack of the public perception that it is folly, highlights the ignorance in the Western world as to what money and monetary policy is. You cannot print money on the global reserve currency. You can't do that. That's putting Zimbabwe on a global scale. You can't do that. You can't undermine Korea's Uh, savings account in the form of treasuries. Countries don't just save treasuries to to buy crude oil. They they save treasuries to serve as the foundation for their banking system. And you can't undermine that with hyperinflation of the same object. You can't do that. You you wreck the global economy. You, You cause... Capital destruction on a global scale, and that is precisely why the global economy is not recovering. We're attacking the capital. So these major nations of the world got together in in 2013 and decided that we needed a transition to be safe and smooth to get away from the dollar as the currency for global reserve. And that's not a simple task, Eli. It, it's, it's like saying, well, we need to go from a deeply corrupt and ingrained dollar to a deeply safe and deeply honest system based on gold and integrate trade and banking at the same time. You can't do that quickly. So they came up with a multiple-step program, and the U.S. signed on it uh, in December of 2013. And then like all treaties – 
for the U.S. government, we violated it. And we did so in February by having the Ukraine war, where we stole their 33 tons of gold. That bought some more time. But more importantly, we cut off the, uh, the umbilical cord between Russia and, and Western Europe for energy supply because we don't want that marriage to happen. We, we're, really, we're willing even to have Western Europe's economy wrecked just so they don't team up with Russia. So there's a lot of deception involved in this reset. Uh, way too much attention was paid to the Iraqi dinar <laughs> and the Vietnam dong. And that game has been played. Uh, Geithner, Paulson, Hillary Clinton, they've already cashed in. That was six months ago. That game's over. So anyone who's hanging on to Iraqi dinar, you're, you're a knucklehead. You missed the whole game there and the entire fraud. That was the deception regarding. They, they claimed that, well, we're going to have to make some adjustments to many, many minor currencies in the world. Well, yeah, but the main focus is the major currencies of the world. The reset, the currency reset is a grand misnomer. And I find the word is misused a lot. Misnomer means false name. It's that simple, false name. The, re the global currency reset is really a multi-stage procedure toward reinstalling the gold standard. That's what the reset is. Return of the gold standard and all the different procedural steps that lead to it. So the United States had a delay. We figured, hey, they'll offer a Ukraine war and disrupt everything and just kind of make a mess in Europe and basically take a grand crap in the European Union. You know, we've seen recently the, the crap stirred up with the Syrian refugees who are mostly not Syrian. They're from Morocco. They're from Algeria. They're from Libya. They're from all over the place. And to qualify, you need a criminal record. So it's like a macro case of the Mariel Cuba dumping of prisoners on South Florida. Okay, so there's a lot of deception, a lot of nastiness, and, you know, wherever the U.S. government has its hand, expect something to be destroyed and people to die. And that's what's going on right now in Europe. So the, the, the global currency reset has a lot of events. And think of it as like a pre pre preparatory events. You, you need to, we got a, a grand event as a three days after the supposed rate hike. It was not 25 basis points higher. It was about eight, which meant that they really had not enacted their rate hike after three full days. So what on earth were they doing? If you take a look at now, you see that somewhere between 16, 18, and 20 basis points is the hike on the effective, not the hike, is the increase on the effective Fed, run, Fed funds interest rate. But more importantly, what you see now is that the three-month Treasury bill has an inverted yield versus the Fed funds rate. This cannot stand. They, they've actually caused a disruption. You know what I'm trying to say. All right, so these are members of a banker crime syndicate. They don't tell the truth. They never do. Greenspan used to rely on his obfuscation, which, went, which really meant confuse the heck out of you so that you are impressed enough to say whatever you want to do. When they recently in 2013 had their taper talk they threatened to raise the interest rates and I called it a trial balloon now they've done more they've actually uh, made an open statement that they were raising the interest rate for the Fed funds by 25 basis points and there are other little details related to that but I'm calling them liars because if you look at the effective Fed fund rate on the very short end 
of the Treasury market. When they announced the rate hike, they slipped in something that usually is mentioned in the second and third paragraph and not very well focused upon by the, the, the shallow uh, minds out there. The, you know, <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I just don't have a whole lot of respect for the financial community, the analysts, the observers, the traders. They just look at the headline and go, okay, here's how we, here's how we act on it. Here's how we make money on it. Here's how we exploit it. Here's a trading strategy. What they did was they cited a heavier reliance on the reverse repo. And I'm, I'm willing to admit I got something backwards. Before, I thought we had a confirmation of gigantic investment. Do the math and join the over 15,000 new customers who have recently made the switch to SD Bullion. Why pay more? Hey everyone, this is Elijah Johnson with FinanceInLiberty.com and back with us today is Dr. Jim Willie, editor of The Hattrick Letter found on GoldenJackass.com. Jim, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, it's a pleasure to be back, Eli. All right, well, I'd first like to discuss about the Fed's rate hike. Now, what's really interesting is you think that the Fed actually hasn't raised interest rates, you think this was just all a fake, and instead the Fed is implementing more quantitative easing. Did you want to discuss a little bit about this? Yes, I think that's a real good capsule summary. To begin with, the Fed is one of the greatest lying institutions in all of modern history. And they are the tool for tremendous largesse bestowed upon their own members. Now, they are grand liars, but they are also enablers of great theft. And the greatest theft they've ever had was following the Lehman incident, the Lehman event, the Lehman death in 2008. They had two different waves where they gave near 0% loans to the owners of the Fed, $23 trillion. Okay? I would like to get a 0% loan for $1 trillion. I'll settle for maybe a $1 I 